What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over YouTube advertising. So I'm going to show you how to create your own YouTube advertising campaigns for your business. Now in order to get started, you're going to need a Google Ads account and you're going to need a YouTube channel for your business. So before you can run a YouTube advertisement, you have to actually upload your video directly to YouTube so that you can run it as an advertisement across YouTube and across the Google Display Network. So that's really where you want to get started. And you can use the same exact Google account. So sign up for a Gmail account or a Google account in general, create your Google Ads account, create your YouTube channel, and that's really where you want to get started. Now, once you do that, the next thing you want to do is link your YouTube account to your Google Ads account. So you want to set up your channel and everything and create your about section, you link your website and some of your social media channels. Once you do all of that, the next thing you want to do, if you're in YouTube, you're going to go to YouTube Studio. And this is going to be your channel dashboard in YouTube. Now, I just created this channel. I'm not actually going to be running real video advertising campaigns for farmhouse goals. I'm just going to show you exactly how you would go about setting them up. So once you're in this portion, the next thing you want to do, once you're in your creator studio, you want to click on settings. And then what you want to do is come over to channel and then advanced settings. So under advanced settings, you're going to see Google ads account linking. So from there, what you can do is click on link account. And it's going to give you the option to enter a link name. So what I can do is farmhouse goals, Google ads, and then Google ads, customer ID. So you're going to be able to find the customer ID by going into your Google ads account and you can find it right up at the top right here. It's going to look like a phone number. So you're going to take that right here. We're going to copy this. We're going to come back over and we're going to enter that here. Now you can see it's already accepted. So what you can also do is in your Google ads account, go to tools and settings and under setup, you're going to go to linked accounts. This is where you can link different accounts to your Google ads account. And in this section, you want to come down to YouTube and click on details. So you can see this media entertainment channel sent me a link request. So I can view requests and I can approve this and that would allow me to actually run advertisements for this company. I really don't know who this company is at all. They might have seen one of my YouTube videos and they probably just sent me a link request using this ID at the very top. So I can click on view request here and I can just reject it. So that's one option you have. If you have a link request, you don't want to link, then that's what you want to do. Now, if you see link YouTube to Google ads, what you want to do is click on add channel and you can search for a YouTube channel using the actual channel URL. So what we can do is we can come back over here and I can click on done here first. So you can see Google ads account linking. So I have this, we can click on save. So what we can do is come over here and we're going to go to your channel. So this is your channel page right here. That's the page that I started on and we can take this link. We can come back over and we can copy and paste this here. So that's two different ways to link your YouTube account to your Google ads account. So you can see select channel owner. So you can either do I own this channel or someone else owns this channel. I'm just going to do I own this channel and then we're going to click on go to YouTube. Okay. So now it's telling me to set up a Google ads account linking. So link name. So I could just do the same thing I did. So we'll just do farmhouse goals, Google ads link. And I'll just do two here just so I don't have double we'll click on link. Okay. So now my account link is saved. And if we come back over here, you're going to see, I have this account linked right here. Now, one of the suggested channels for me is Surfside PPC. So they probably know that I own Surfside PPC. So I could go ahead and link these, this channel to my Google ads account as well, but I'm not going to do that right now. So what we can do is just come back over here to YouTube and we're going to come down here to settings. And what we're going to do is go to channel again and advanced settings. And you can see we have it linked here. So two different ways that you can link your accounts. You can either send a request like I did at first. So you send a request from YouTube to the Google ads account. And as I showed you earlier, I had that request up at the top and I rejected it. So in this case, if I got the request from farmhouse goals before I actually went ahead and linked it through Google ads, then what I can do is just accept that link. And you just want to make sure your status is linked here. That allows you to look at view counts, remarketing engagement, gives you just a lot more data and a lot more that you can do when you link your channels. Now, once you're done doing that, I always recommend setting up conversion tracking. So if your plan is to use YouTube advertising to drive conversions for your business, then what you want to do is go to tools and settings and then come down here to measurement and you're going to click on conversions. So in this conversions portion, this is where you can create all of your conversion actions. And if you have multiple conversions on your website, you can create conversion action sets. So you can see I have multiple conversions here already set up for farmhousegoals.com, but a sample conversion, let's just say I'm sending people to my website, Surfside PPC. I want people to come in here, sign up for my newsletter for a free video and ebook. 
enter their first name, their email address, they click on submit, it's gonna redirect them to this page right here, surfsideppc.com slash confirm. Please confirm your email address, thank you for signing up. So what I can do is use this page, every time someone visits this confirmation page, that means that they filled out my newsletter form. As you can see here, I have all of my different conversion actions already imported for this Farmhouse Goals account. If you're looking for an in-depth tutorial about Google Ads conversion tracking, what you wanna do is check out my video. So I did Google Ads conversion tracking with Google Analytics, how to track forms, clicks, and transactions. So regardless of the type of website you have, you should be able to track conversions after watching this video. My preferred method is to use Google Analytics because if you already have your website, you're using Google Ads, you should install Google Analytics, which is very easy to do. And then once you have Google Analytics installed, all you have to do is open up your analytics account, go to the admin screen, go to goals here. And if you go to goals, you're going to see I already have a bunch of goals here for farmhousegoals.com. You're going to create a new goal. They have a template here. So select a template to start with a pre-filled configuration. But to make it really easy, all you have to do is use custom, continue, name. So we can just do confirmation page. And then you can just do destination. If you don't have a goal on your website, I always recommend using the duration or pages and screens per session. You can also use an event, but you're gonna to have to create the event first in Google Analytics. Again, that's a little bit more complicated, but if you're just using a simple destination goal, click on continue, destination, so all you have to do here is confirm. So then anytime someone does reach that confirmation page, I'm able to track that as a conversion back to my Google Ads account or back to any source that is driving that conversion. So you click on save, it's gonna create that new goal. And then you just go into your Google Ads account. And again, you wanna link your Google Ads and Google Analytics account the same way we did it with YouTube. It's just, you're using two different accounts. Come here to create a new goal. If you're using website here, you're gonna to have to either use the Google Ads Pixel or Google Tag Manager or install some custom code. But if you have your accounts linked, which again, you just go to tools and settings, set up linked accounts, and it's easy to link your accounts if they're both under the same exact Google account. Go to import, Google Analytics, continue, and then any of the goals that you've created. So I didn't actually go through with creating that confirmation goal, but I could take this smart goal right here, import and continue, and start using that for my campaigns. So I'm gonna click on cancel here. I'm just gonna leave mine as is. Now, one of my main conversions here is this conversion right here. So if I click on it, you can see my category is an outbound click. So if I go to edit settings, you can see category outbound click. If you go to the categories, there are sales and leads categories. So based on the category of your conversion is gonna depend on the type of campaign you wanna create for your YouTube advertising. So once you have your conversion tracking set up, we've linked our Google ads and our YouTube account, we're able to come back over here and we're able to come to the campaign screen. Now, the last step we need to do before we can actually create our new video campaign is you have to upload the YouTube advertisements you want to use for your advertising campaigns to your YouTube channel. So I have two different videos here. I have a 30 second and a one minute and 30 second advertisement. Now for YouTube advertising, there's no limit for how long of an advertisement you can run. I've seen advertisements that are 45 minutes. I've seen advertisements that are several hours. I've seen advertisements that are a minute or less. And sometimes for different ad formats, you can have six second ads and you can even have 15 second ads. So there's really no limit and there's almost no best practice when it comes to creating your video advertisements. But what Google Ads does recommend is three minutes or less and 30 seconds or longer. So that's what they recommend if you're running an in-stream advertisement. As an advertiser, you're gonna get charged when someone either clicks on your advertisement or watches 30 seconds or more. So once they reach that 30 second portion of your advertisement, you get charged as an advertiser and then that's gonna count as a view on your advertisement, whether someone clicks on something or not. So once you have your videos uploaded to your channel that you wanna use, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna come back over to our Google Ads account and we're gonna to click to create a new campaign. So you can use pretty much any goal that comes up here for a video campaign. You can use the sales goal, you can use the leads goal, you can use the website traffic goal, product and brand consideration, and you can also use brand awareness and reach. So if you're clicking on any of these, you're gonna see display and video, for product and brand consideration, display and video, for website traffic, that gives you pretty much every campaign type here, so you're gonna see video here, leads, this is the one that I generally use is leads, or sales, 
But for me, my category of conversion that I showed you earlier was leads. So every time someone converts on my website, farmhousegoals.com, it counts as a lead. So I'm going to click here and then I click on video. So from there, you're going to see drive conversions, get more conversions with video ads designed to encourage valuable interactions with your business. So that's going to be the main one that I'm going to set up today and show you. Now, the other thing you can do is if you come into product and brand consideration, you click on video, it's going to give you three options, influence consideration, ad sequence, or shopping. So with shopping, if you have an e-commerce website, you can actually promote relevant products, get people to shop on your website with skippable in-stream ads. So it'll show your in-stream ads and it'll actually have shopping advertisements there as well that people can click through to go to your website and shop. Ad sequence is gonna show ads in a particular sequence to individual viewers. So that means if, for example, I want someone to see this advertisement first and this advertisement second, I can set up an ad sequence so anybody who views my video advertisements is gonna see this one first, this one second. It can be great to show different features of a product or different amenities or different things that you wanna feature about your products and services. Now, if we come back over here, influence consideration is allows you to run skippable in-stream ads, which is mainly what I'm gonna go through today, or video discovery ads. So I'll go through both of these in a second, but the other thing you can do is if you click on brand awareness and reach and video, it's gonna give you all these different options. Skippable in-stream ads, so that's the main ad format that you probably see on YouTube. Bumper ads, so these are six second advertisements. Non-skippable in-stream advertisements are 15 seconds or less. Outstream advertisements gonna reach people on their phones and tablets. These are a mobile only ad format. And then ad sequence is what I went over earlier. So if you use the brand awareness and reach or product and brand consideration, that's gonna give you some different video ad formats that you can try. Now for me, I'm gonna create this leads and we're gonna go through video. We're gonna drive conversions and click on continue. Now the type of advertisement I'm gonna be showing you today is a skippable in-stream advertisement. I'll show you how to set up video discovery ads after I finish with this campaign, but with a skippable advertisement, it's gonna look something like this. So if someone comes to my video, really any video on my channel, but this one, Google Ads Audience Manager, Audience Targeting, there's an advertisement running beforehand. So you can see it's going to upviral.com. If someone clicks here, I'm gonna end up earning a small portion of revenue and the advertiser is gonna be charged. Now, once this ad is run for 30 seconds or longer, if someone clicks on skip ads right away, then the advertiser is not charged at all. So if you're the advertiser, someone sees the ad, clicks on skip ads before that 30 second portion, then they're not charged at all. If someone clicks, they're immediately charged. So that's how these work. You also get this up at the top. This is considered a companion banner. Now the other video format, one of the other main video formats is video, video discovery ads. So with video discovery ads, if someone goes to YouTube, they search in YouTube, let's just say Shopify SEO, you're gonna see this advertisement right here is my example, how to get 20K visitors per day. So this website marketing advice is paying for this ad placement right here at the top, and it's a video discovery ad. Now you might also see if you go to YouTube and you type in something, for my example, I have WordPress Tutorial 2020, and you're gonna see these advertisements at the top here. These are actually powered by Google Ads. So if you're wondering some of the different ads that you see within YouTube, these are the way that people can actually run these advertisements. The main two that you really need to know about are skippable in-stream and video discovery ads, although there are other ad formats you can run. So coming back over here, we're creating our video campaign. So our campaign name, I'm just gonna leave this as is, we'll do video conversions. Since we're driving conversions, the only two bid strategies we can choose from are maximize conversions or target CPA. What you can do is just create your campaign, use maximize conversions, and you can always switch to target CPA later. With target CPA, if you know, for example, a conversion for your business is worth $10, then you wanna set a target CPA that's less than $10. So I can come here and I can say, I wanna set a target CPA at $5 and try to drive two conversions per day basically, or more. But that's ultimately with a target CPA, you're trying to drive as many conversions as possible for $5 or less. What I would recommend doing if you're not sure what target CPA to set here is just start with maximize conversions because you can always change your bid strategy later. Now budget and dates, Google Ads recommends at least a $10 daily budget if you're running video advertisements. I've ran campaigns that are less than that. I've ran campaigns that are much more than that. So we'll just come here and we'll say, we'll do $15 per day that we're gonna run. So we'll keep scrolling down. 
networks. So you're going to see here with YouTube search results. So those are actually video discovery ads. They're only available with some of the other campaign goals. So if you're using the leads, sales, or website traffic campaign goals, then you're not going to be able to run the YouTube search results under networks here. Now you have YouTube videos, so ads can appear on YouTube videos, channel pages, and the YouTube homepage. You can use in-stream and video discovery ads. And then you also have the option for video partners on the display network. So that means, for example, if someone goes to a website and they go to watch a news video, maybe they're watching a sports video, before their video plays or during their video, they're going to see your advertisement. So it's very similar to YouTube advertising, except instead of it being on YouTube.com, it's just going to be on display network partners. So with Surfside PPC, I can upload a video directly to my website. Someone starts watching that video and then YouTube can actually run advertisements on the display network as well. I would recommend using video partners on the display network when you're setting your network. So you have YouTube videos and video partners on the display network. Coming down, languages, you want to select the languages your customers speak. So for this, I'm just going to select English. So my video is in English. So we're going to select English here and we're going to set that as our language. Location, so you want to set the locations to target where people are going to see your video. So obviously you want to choose here, whatever locations your business serves with your products and or your services, that's the locations you want to set here. So we're going to use that here. Inventory type, you can see there's standard inventory limited inventory and expanded inventory. Essentially, the biggest thing is how sensitive of content do you want to show your video advertising. Limited inventory will limit it a little bit. Moderate profanity, moderate sexually suggestive content. Recommended is standard inventory. Usually, I just leave it as standard inventory. If you want to leave it open to everything, then you can use expanded inventory. I usually just select standard here and we'll close this excluded types and labels so you can select content types to exclude embedded youtube videos so if i embed youtube videos on my website people can select i don't want my ads to run there live streaming videos so any live streaming video on youtube that's running advertisements then you can exclude that from your campaign content not yet labeled so digital content labels to exclude so if you're trying to exclude some different digital content labels. You can do content that hasn't been labeled and mature audiences if you want. Usually, again, I'll just leave this open and just leave it as is. So excluded types and labels and inventory type, I usually just leave as is. Now, site link extensions, you can actually add additional links to your advertisement. So I can come over here and we'll just come down and we'll say Farmhouse Coles Shop. We will come down to the bottom here. We'll just do our homepage. You can create new site link extensions here, but for now, I'm just going to use the ones I've already created. Uh, maybe we'll use farmhouse lighting and we'll just use our farmhouse furniture here. So we'll use these four site link extensions. They say add at least two site link extensions. It just helps drive additional traffic back to your website. So that's good. We have our site link extension set under additional settings. So conversions, you could either use the account level include in conversion settings. So that means if you have a conversion that you're tracking for, usually it's automatically included in your conversions unless you set that as no, or you can set specific conversion actions and you can also set specific conversion action sets. So the main one I use is here and you can see it's using the D conversion and my outbound clicks conversion. So two of my main conversions, or I could just come to this list and I can select one from the list or select several from the list. So some different options for the conversions that you wanna optimize for. For me, I just use this main one here and click on save. Okay, so devices. So I usually set this as all eligible devices. You can set for targeting for specific devices, computers, mobile phones, tablets, TV screens, operating systems, device models, and networks. So if you wanna to limit to specific devices and you wanna exclude specific devices from your campaign, this is where you would do that. Next, frequency capping. So I like to use frequency capping sometimes. With this, you can cap impression frequency and view frequency. So pretty much the same except impression is anytime someone sees the advertisement. View is anytime someone actually counts as a view on the advertisement. So I can cap impression frequency and say, I only want someone to see impressions three times per day. Once they get to three, I don't want them to see it a fourth time. Cap view frequency, I can say, I only want people to see my ad twice per day to count as a view. Once they see it twice, I don't wanna show them my video again. So just some different ways you can cap how, who is seeing your video to make sure you're having a unique reach much larger than just the same user seeing your advertisements every day. So I'm just gonna leave frequency capping wide open. Ad schedule, if you wanna set a specific ad schedule, you can do that here. So what we're gonna be doing now is creating our first ad group. 
So we have our ad group name here. And usually what I'll use for ad group is just whatever audience I'm targeting. So let's just say, for example, I want to target my custom intent audience. So we're going to name our ad group custom intent audience. Now under people, you want to start with demographics. So you can choose your main target market here. That's going to be the most valuable for your business. So for farmhousegoals.com, my most valuable demographic is female and it's gonna be ages 35 and up. So I'm gonna do 35 to 65 plus, get rid of unknown, and I'm gonna leave parental status wide open and household income wide open. Now that's gonna narrow my impressions down to 4.7 billion, which is still plenty of weekly impressions. So that's where I generally start is with demographics, is choosing the demographic targeting based on your data in Google Analytics, based on all the data you have, who is the most valuable customer for your business? Now next is gonna be audiences. I've gone over audiences a lot in some past videos. I'm still gonna go through it again right now, but if you wanna see a detailed look at different audiences you can target, you wanna use this video here, Google Ads Audience Manager and Audience Targeting, complete video guide to audience types. So that will give you some more insight as you're selecting who you wanna target. So what you can do first is just go right to the search bar and search whoever you wanna target based on a certain audience. So I can come into the search bar and let's just say, for example, I wanna find investors. So I just type in invest and you're gonna find in market audiences for investment services, retirement planning, financial planning, if we keep scrolling down, we have some life events here, we have affinity audiences here, and then we have some detailed demographics here. So there's a lot of different options if you just do a simple search, but rather than do a search, I'm gonna come over to browse. You can also go to ideas and based on your past performance, they're gonna give you some ideas. Based on advertisers like you, you're gonna get some ideas. So I'm gonna go to browse here and you can see the different types of categories that we can target. So detailed demographics, so that includes parental status, marital status, education, and home ownership status. So if I go to education, I can do current college students or highest level of educational attainment. I'm not gonna be doing that. Now keep in mind, every audience you add over here, it's gonna target each of those audiences. So it's an or thing. So if you click on affinity here and I go to affinity, I do banking and finance and beauty and wellness. Anybody who is in the beauty and wellness affinity audience or anybody who is in the banking and finance affinity audience is gonna see my advertisements. People don't need to belong to both of these affinity audiences. So we're gonna clear these. Affinity I, and custom affinity to me are too broad. I prefer to use in-market life events and custom intent and similar audiences. Now what's gonna perform the best always is gonna be remarketing. So if you're trying to reach people and you're trying to drive conversions, people who have already interacted with your business are generally gonna give you the best conversion rate and the lowest cost per conversion. Now, I'm gonna use a custom intent audience here. So if you're using a custom intent, it's essentially a custom in-market audience that you can create for your own business. So you use, create, come here, new custom intent audience, name your audience, and add search terms. Use your SEO keyword list, use your PPC advertising keyword list. So any of the keywords that you're targeting with your content, with your advertisements, you wanna add here. So if we come over to my custom intent audience I've already created, Farmhouse Goals Custom Intent, you can see weekly impressions zero to 100K. So it's a very targeted audience. If I click on edit, you can see the different types of keywords that I entered here are related to farmhouse home decor, farmhouse furniture. So some of the different search terms and some of the different keywords that my customers are typing in. So I'm gonna click on cancel here and this is who I would target. Farmhouse goals, custom intent. Now, if you wanna use an in-market audience, for example, you can come here and look through these different categories to find the right in-market audience for you. So if I come to babies and children's products, for example, I'm selling car seats, I can target child car seats. So this is just some different options, and these are gonna be people that are in the market for child car seats. So based on the websites they're visiting, based on their search terms, Google knows that these people are looking for child car seats. So I'm gonna get rid of that for now. I'm just gonna choose my custom intent audience here. If we come back, you can also use audience combinations. So I have an example audience combination here, so I can come to my audience one, click on edit, and you can see it's my farmhouse goals custom intent audience, and a similar audience to my converted audience. So I can also exclude my remarketing, anybody who's been to my website over the past 540 days. So you can combine audiences and target them with your YouTube advertisements. That's one option you have, so that's something that I could try to see which audiences are gonna perform the best for this campaign. Now coming back over here, remarketing and similar audiences. If we click on this one, similar audiences are gonna be created based on your remarketing lists. 
So I come into website visitors, I create an audience, all users 540 days. Anybody who's been to Farmhouse Goals over the last 540 days is gonna be added to this audience. I can target them directly with my ads. Now I'm not gonna be doing that, so I'm gonna click on the X here, but as you create these different website visitor audiences here, and you come into the similar section, you're gonna see it's gonna be the same exact as your remarketing lists. So I can use similar to all users 540 days and target them here. So generally the main audiences that I recommend using are remarketing if you're really focused on driving conversions, and then the other three, in-market, custom intent, and similar audiences. Those are usually what I see the best performance from, whether it's a display campaign or a video campaign. For this, I'm gonna use my custom intent and we're gonna keep scrolling down. Now content, you can narrow your reach with keywords, topics, or placements. So with keywords, what I can do is click on keywords here and it's gonna tell me choose terms related to your products or services to target relevant content. So you can enter your website here, you can enter a product or service. So let's just say I do farmhouse, click on enter. Then if I come here with keywords and let's just say I add all ideas, it's gonna add all these keywords. Google Ads and YouTube are gonna go out and look for content that's gonna be the most relevant to these different keywords. So it doesn't mean that people are actually typing in these keywords when they're looking up videos on YouTube. It means that Google Ads, YouTube has taken these keywords and said, okay, these videos are gonna be the closest to these keywords that we're entering. I usually don't use keywords very often, so I'm gonna get rid of this. And the other two options you have, so usually I'll use topics, because with topics, you can just come in here, they have a bunch of preset topics, so I can come into finance, for example, and I can just say, you know, people who are watching videos about banking, I want them to see my advertisements. People who are watching videos about finance, I want them to see my advertisements. So it's gonna narrow your reach, and if you're already using audience targeting, you don't really wanna narrow your reach too much, especially if you're using a custom intent audience like I am. So for this, I really don't wanna narrow it too much, but if I did, you can enter a specific topic here. And last but not least is placements. So with placements, I can actually say, let's just type in farmhouse here. I can say I wanna target specific YouTube channels, specific YouTube videos. So if I come into YouTube channels, you can see farmhouse productions, farmhouse on Boone. So I can look through some of these different YouTube video channels and try to target them with my advertisements. So people, for example, can choose Surfside PPC here. So if I do Surfside PPC, people can choose to run their advertisements directly on my YouTube channel. So if they select this here, then that means it's gonna use all this targeting above and it will only show their advertisements if they select a, if they are watching videos from my Surfside PPC channel. So it's really gonna limit the amount of people that are gonna see your videos. So placements can be good if you wanna reach people exactly as they're watching videos about certain topics and about certain categories that are gonna be related to your products and services. So with content, usually what I'll do is I'll separate content from these audiences unless I use a very broad audience, like maybe an affinity audience, I can use avid investors, and then I can come down and topics and I can say anybody who's watching any videos about finance. So I can use those two audiences to really narrow down to make sure people are gonna be seeing videos and having an interest in what I'm promoting. Now, we're gonna be creating our video advertisement. So at this point, what you should have is your videos already uploaded to YouTube. So I opened up my 30 second video first. So we're gonna come up here. We're gonna take my 30 second video. So it's Farmhouse Goals June Promotion Short. Take the URL, so we're gonna copy the URL come back over and we're gonna paste the URL right here. So it's gonna pull up this video, the only video ad format we can run, skippable in-stream ads. So what we need to set is our final URL. So I'm gonna be sending people directly to this promotion page, so farmhousegoals.com slash promo, copy the URL, June sale, use promo code June 2020 for 20% off. Wanna make sure you're creating a seamless experience. So my video, if we just come over here real quick, and we click on play, you can see it's gonna show farmhouse goals and save 20% on everything in the store, farmhousegoals.com slash promo. So that's where I want people to go. I want people to see this video, go to my website and hopefully purchase something. So we'll paste our final URL in here. Okay, so this is where our traffic is gonna be sent. If we come over to display URL, usually I'll just enter farmhousegoals.com. Okay, call to action. So call to action is gonna be the button right here. So for that, I wanna do shop now. And then headline. So headline, you only get 15 characters. So what I can do is just maybe save 20% today. Okay, so we have save 20% today, shop now, save 20% on everything in the store, farmhousegoals.com. The video is all geared around different types of farmhouse decorations. 
companion banner so you could either upload an image so if you click on upload an image 300 by 60 maximum file size 150 kilobytes i'm just going to auto generate using my channel banner that's usually what i use if i'm ever running a youtube ad so ad name what i'll do is 30 second advertisement june promo okay so now we're ready to create our campaign so we're going to click create campaign but what we can do over here is just preview the way our ad's going to look so you can see the advertisement save 20 percent on everything in the store people can skip it but if someone watches the full advertisement that's when i'll be charged or if someone clicks on the ad so this is how it's going to look on mobile and on desktop it's going to look a little bit something like this so i could have moved this message over here in the bottom left but it's fine just keep in mind as you're creating your video ad you might want to actually put some messaging over here or up at the top left portion of your video i just created this video ad pretty quickly so if i were going to go back and edit it i'd probably move this up a little bit higher so that's fine though someone can click on this right here they'll go to my website so you could preview your ad as well i'm not going to be doing that right now i'm just going to click on create campaign okay so congratulations your campaign is ready i have my one ad group i have my one advertisement so we're going to continue to the campaign and what i want to do now is come into this ad group that i already created and i want to create another advertisement i want to do mine for my one minute and 30 second advertisement so we're going to click on the plus sign and again all we need to do is come over here we're going to open up this video i'm just going to copy the link address we're going to come back and we're going to paste it okay so skippable entry mad everything else is going to be exactly the same okay so farmhousegoals.com slash promo display url call to action is going to be shop now and save 20 percent today so it's that simple now we can just do one minute 30 second okay so we have one minute 30 second advertisement june promo we can click on save ad so now what's going to happen is we're going to have two advertisements running against each other so we have our 30 second advertisement and our one minute 30 second advertisement so we can see which video is actually going to perform better so you can create another advertisement here and over time what's going to happen is google ads will serve your best performing video ads so it's going to help you drive more conversions if we come over here you can see the conversions you're driving from your videos you can see your views your impressions your view rate your average cost per view and if you come into columns here there's a lot more that you can see about how long people are viewing your videos you have earned views here it's going to show the total cost for each video so you want to look at all that data as you're running your campaign now the other thing you might want to do is come back over to your ad group so we're just going to come to our campaign and click on ad groups so we can take this existing ad group we can just copy and paste it so we're going to copy it and what we're going to do is we're going to paste this ad group Okay, so we're gonna paste it right into video conversions. We're gonna click on done. And then we're gonna click on paste. Okay, so now the reason that I wanna do that is let's just say I wanna set another ad group. So for my campaign, I'm gonna run multiple ad groups and I wanna try an in-market audience. So we're gonna come over to ad group and I'm gonna do in-market audience. We're gonna click on save. So we already have the same targeting. So we are gonna to have to come into this ad group. So we click on this ad group. We're gonna come into audiences. So we're gonna take this farmhouse goals custom intent audience, edit, and we're gonna remove it. So we're gonna permanently remove this audience from this ad group. So we're gonna add an in-market audience here. So we're gonna to click to add audiences. So we can come over here to browse and I can actually browse through, but I'm just gonna do search. So let's just say I type in farmhouse. So some of the different options it gives me farmhouse decor affinity audience. This is a custom affinity that I've created and then some different options down here. So you can find some life events. There's some in-market audiences. If I come over and do ideas, this is going to be based on my past click performance. So I can do home decor. Maybe I'll do home furnishings. So people who are looking for furniture, home decor. So we're going to take these two and we're just going to come down and click on save. Now I can also go into placements and I can say I want people to be viewing videos about specific topics, but we'll just try this in-market audience. So now if we come back over to our campaign, we can come over to our ad groups and you can see we have an ad group for our custom intent, an ad group for our in-market. I can create another ad group for similar audiences, another ad group for remarketing audiences, and maybe even another ad group that's targeting some topics, some placements, so using specific content. Those are the five ad groups I'd recommend creating if you are using different ad groups within your campaign. And then each ad group, if you copy and paste it like I showed you, it's gonna copy and paste your advertisements too. As you can see here, I already got approved for my 30 second advertisement. So I get some questions sometimes for how long the review process takes. It really varies. I've seen it take several days sometimes. Sometimes things get disapproved and usually there's a reason for it. So if you ever get disapproved or things are under review, you can always contact Google directly and have them try to 
approve your existing advertisements. So that's YouTube advertising. This is how to create skippable in-stream ad campaigns that are driven to drive conversions back on your website. Now, if you wanna create a video discovery ad, you're gonna to have to create a different campaign with a different goal. So if you click on the plus sign, creating a new campaign, let's just say we click on product and brand consideration, we're gonna be running a video campaign and we're gonna do influence consideration. So with this, we're gonna click on continue. So what you're gonna see, the type video campaign, product and brand consideration, campaign name, the bidding strategy. So with the bidding strategy, the only option you have is maximum cost per view. So you set the amount that you're willing to pay for each individual view, and it's gonna be different than actually going for maximized conversions or target CPA, because you're really just view focused rather than conversion focused. Now budget and dates, you can set a campaign total budget, or if we come here, you can set a daily budget. So let's just say I set a daily budget of $15 again. So you can set start and end dates, networks. So this is where you can just choose YouTube search results. You can also run YouTube videos and video partners on the display network. So you can keep all three of these selected here. And if we scroll down, so we're creating our ad group, you set your targeting. Targeting is gonna be the same exact way for in-stream and video discovery ads. Set your maximum cost per view bid. So let's just come in here and let's just say I'm willing to pay 10 cents for each view on my video my YouTube video. So what I can do is I'm going to paste my one minute and 30 second video and you can see the video ad format skippable in stream or video discovery. So if I click on video discovery, you're going to see we're going to have our ad appear in the search results like the one I showed you earlier. So it's going to show up at the top of the search results just like this rather than showing during a video like this one does. So if we come back over, we have video discovery ad. You want to select your thumbnail. So there's gonna be some different thumbnails that you can select from. So we'll just take this one right here. Set your headline. So we're just gonna come here. You get 100 characters for your headline. Okay, so I did farmhouse goals, 20% off sale, limited time June offer. So it's actually gonna replace the title of my video here. So when someone does, this headline is how to get 20K visitors per day. And then what I get is two description lines. So I can say save 20 for 20% off farmhouse decor and farmhouse furniture in June, video discovery ad one, we have our thumbnail set. This is how it's gonna look on mobile. This is how it'll look on desktop. So you can see the way the advertisement looks and now we can just create our campaign and that's how to create video discovery ads. Now what you can do if you're using product and brand consideration is we can create a brand new ad group and we can come down here. We're just gonna enter the same exact U, uh, URL for our video. So we'll take this one, copy the link address, come back over and paste it. And we can actually run skippable in-stream ads in a separate ad group. So if you wanna run different video ad formats in the same campaign, the best way to do that is choose the product and brand consideration goal. So this is my video consideration campaign and create an ad group with a video discovery ad and an ad group with a skippable in-stream ad. So some different ways that you can actually target your videos and run different video ad formats. So that's my YouTube advertising tutorial. Hopefully this helps you learn how to create a campaign and everything you really need to know about getting started with YouTube advertising. So we're just gonna leave for right now, come back over to our all campaign screen. Now, one of the main questions you might have is, how do I create video advertisements? It's really hard if you're not used to creating video ads to create really effective ones. So one thing you might wanna do is go to youtube.com slash ads slash making a video ad. If you just go to youtube.com slash ads, you'll come to this homepage, but under creating an ad, one of the tabs at the top, you can see there's some different partners that you can choose from that will help you create video advertisements. Now I haven't used every single one of these partners, but if you go with some of these different ones, they are reputable and they help, will help you create good video advertisements if you wanna make sure you're getting the most for your money. Now one of the other tools that I like to help you find the audience that you should target is if you go to thinkwithgoogle.com slash feature slash find my audience. Now I'll put all these links in the video description so you can easily find them, but you can see go beyond demographics to find the people who matter most to your business. So I can say I wanna find people from an in-market audience who are interested in home and garden, media, so really anything here. So for me, be in-market, in home and garden, and start now. So it's gonna say here are 11 YouTube audiences who are researching or planning to purchase home and garden related products or services. If I scroll down, cookware and bakeware, home and garden services, home appliances. So this can help you learn which in-market audience is gonna be best for you. And you can also find affinity audiences this way as well. Just choose a different type of audience. 
So hopefully that video is helpful. If you're looking for more information and more resources, go to youtube.com slash ads. You're gonna learn the most by actually running a video advertising campaign. And you can always come here, create a video conversion campaign or a video consideration campaign, run your budget, just set your budget at $5 per day, run it for 10 days or so, you're gonna spend $50. You'll learn a lot about the impressions you're driving, the views you're driving, whether or not you're driving conversions, and you can look at the total view rate for your different videos and see what's performing well. Maybe you wanna try a completely different video. So what I would probably do is use these two videos and eventually create a video with a completely different format, maybe something that quickly slides through a ton of different products for sale so I can see what's actually performing the best and what is actually driving conversions. Because if you come over here to conversions, your ultimate goal is to drive as many conversions as possible for your video campaigns. So that's my YouTube advertising tutorial. There's a lot more you can learn about YouTube advertising. This will help you get started. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.